Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a video for you about these little guys right here. These are the Urban Survival Gear Thai Scribe Go Stonewall Edition uh, pens. Really, really neat, and I just wanted to show them off. But first off, though, before I go any further, I want to thank uh, Urban Survival Gear for sending these guys along. Kelvin over at Urban Survival Gear periodically DMs me and says, Hey, Nick. I had something crazy. You want to check it out? And the answer at this point is just like, yes, yes, I, I do, Kelvin. Um, just because he's kind of a mad scientist of pen making and he keeps doing really neat things that are kind of out of left field. And I think this is another example. But he knows, as always, he knows the story, right? I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly. It might be a gem. It might be junk. He did still send him along. But nonetheless, we do have to assume these are the very best quality controlled one of these guys ever. And I'm doing my best not to let that affect the nature or the quality of my review. Next thing, let's do some size comparisons real quick. Um, first off, I'll put it up against the um, prior generation Die Scribe Go. Um, this is the mini version. What we see is it is exactly the same. Dimensionally, it's no different there. Here it is against the um, Die Scribe Bolt of the original version. Um, so, well, actually, I don't know quite what original means, but this is the V2, I think, uh, or maybe it's a V1. No, I think this is V2. But either way, um, what we see here is that it's uh, it, both of these are a little bit smaller, the large size here as well as the mini size. Here it is against a uh, Parker Jada uh, pen right here. Here it is against the um, pen I stole from a Hampton Inn. And uh, here it is against a conventional Bic Click Stick pen. So what we're going to see here is that these are actually of, uh, they're, they're both relatively small, all things considered. This guy is only slightly larger than the Parker Jada. This guy is pretty small. And actually, if I put it up against the um, uh, Fisher Space Pen Bullet, the Mini is actually quite mini. Um, and so that's kind of neat, right? That's, uh, that's a beautiful thing. And then finally, a quick note on this. This is not going to be a full re-review of the Thai Scribe Go, right? The Thai Scribe Go is a, a pen that I have already reviewed in its original format. And, you know, honestly, these are more like that than anything. What I'm going to do instead is talk about some of the improvements, some of the things that feel like a little bit of a step down, Bravo. Yeah. And uh, the, we'll just take it from there. So let's go on ahead and talk about what I'm loving and what I'm not loving so much about the Stonewall editions of these pens here. So to start with, on the good side, they've done a couple of nice little improvements. If we uh, look at the, 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 the threading of the original one right here. Can you hear that? Maybe not, but it is not the smoothest threading ever. It's fine, and I've definitely had a lot worse, but it's still not the smoothest thing ever. If we compare that to this latest one, it is much, much, much smoother. And this has not even had a chance to wear in yet. So I really have hope that this is going to be a, a, a much smoother pen in the, in the longer term too. And actually that same thing applies to the action. Although the action on the original one, especially now that it's well broken in, is quite smooth. Um, it is actually even smoother here. It feels like there's a little bit less internal resistance, which is something I very much appreciate. Um, it's not something that needed to be done, but this kind of has that ongoing feeling I have with Urban Survival Gear, which is that when Kelvin gets bored, he just competes with himself and tries to make the product better, which is a thing that we all win from, but still, um, so there are some improvements there. One other little improvement that I'll try and show off here on the, on the camera here, grab a flashlight. If we look down inside underneath the clip here, what we're going to be able to see is a little bit of text that says made in, and then a picture of Texas. Um, so this is made in Texas, which is a beautiful thing for a lot of people. Quality is, of course, about effort rather than geography, but it's always nice to support folks nearer to you. And so this is made in Texas, and it proudly displays that under the clip there with a very, very nice fine engraving, as opposed to on the prior generation where no such engraving existed. The only branding was right on the top of this guy, which I could probably show off a little better in this shot right here. Yeah, so you, this was the only kind of engraving that you uh, got on the original one. This still has that, by the way, although it is actually a little bit finer, a little bit nicer. So um, I very much like seeing that. Next thing, both of these feature a dark tie finish, and as did the original one. But actually, the dark tie has gotten a little bit darker in the time from here to here, and it doesn't really look that way under these direct lights, right? Under a uh, strong light, all of these can seem a little bit light, but the thing is, if I put these up against something that is a much more conventional titanium, so for instance, actually a nice example of this would be the Urban Survival Gear, the original, uh, well, the V2 version. This is much, much lighter, or here it is against a Spartan Knives Harzi pocket knife here, and what we're going to see is that this is much, much darker. This is not really an important detail. It's a cool aesthetic, and this is, again, not painted. Neither of these are painted or Cerakoted. This is a brown, uh, bronze pen here. This is a titanium pen, um, but both of them seem very, very dark and almost have a little bit, it's sort of a weird mix of matte and shiny. They're very light absorbing. 
which is kind of nice. And actually, that is even nicer when it is paired with this rock finish. And I'm going to try and zoom in a little bit here so I talk about it. This is the, the, the rock wall that these are named after here. What we see here is that as we look at this, we have this very unique pattern. I've not seen anything like this on a pen before that is very, very rocky. But the thing that's worth noting is that this is not actually like a pattern per se. It's not just one set of instructions going on over and over again. Each one of these rocks is unique. Each one of them is different. Another thing that you're going to notice is it's not that the case that there's like a, a horizontal, well, I guess vertical maybe if you want to worry, depending on what your axes are, but there's not a termination line. It's not the case that it all comes to a single line here as if he had written, you know, made this up on a square and then wrapped it around. Instead, what we have here is something that is a continuous pattern that wraps all the way around it. Um, and it is, in fact, the same pattern across uh, both of the pens here. If I kind of show you this angle, what we see is it is the same pattern. In fact, it is aligned the same on both of the pens, but it is very, very nice, and we see the very beautiful um, bronze finish here coming through next to the dark tie. This is a much nicer contrast because we have this dark tie on the outside and then the, the polished machine tie. I don't know that it's actually polished, but it's just a machine finish that looks polished next to it. It just looks really nice, um, and it adds a lot of pop to it. It's just like it almost, you took this out of the box and it almost looks gilded. And this is after it's been used, after it's been carried and after it's been tarnished. I'm making this video probably a month after I initially received these right? Um, because they're, they're only now about to become available. So I've had a, <coughs> pardon me, I've had a substantial amount of chance to carry these guys to use these. So this is actually a slightly tarnished version of it, which is kind of neat. But these have this very strong look of like a silver inlay or a golden inlay in here, which is not really the case. It's just really, really nice. It also provides, by the way, a very nice grip as you're using the pen, which is really nice. And honestly, it's just a cool pattern, right? Um, is it necessarily exactly the thing I'd put on a pen? Not necessarily, but I'm sure for a lot of people it's going to be very interesting, and apparently it's modeled after rocks in a picture of uh, some play. It's kind of a cool thing, right? So is it necessary? No, but it is cool, and it's very much art, right? This is a, a kind of machining art that's not super common, right? Um, and so I appreciate it. Um, and so to me, that, that that's really good. And then finally, on the good side, this is just Urban Survival Gear competing against himself again, right? I Like I said, I get the feeling that Kelvin gets bored and is just like, hmm, Okay. Well, I haven't done something crazy in 20 minutes, so let's put rocks on it. And you know what? Nate cool, why not, right? Um, you know, it's a beautiful thing, and I love seeing those incremental improvements and just constantly pushing to increase the quality with each product. That is a thing that is just great, and it's nice to see somebody doing that without being forced to do that by other companies uh, in the competition. Kelvin is his own worst enemy, but that means he's our best friend, so to speak. Well, maybe not best friend, but at the very least, he, he's a good guy to buy a pen from. So to me, all of that is the good, is that it's Urban Survival Gear competing against themselves as this very attractive attractive rock pattern, which contrasts very nicely with the darkened finish on the titanium and the bronze as a, uh, a very nice engraving under the clip, as well as some very basic improvements to the functionality and smoothness of the pen. On the bad side, there are a couple of little uh, things. One thing to point out is that the, the, the bronze version here, as well as uh, the copper one, have a titanium bolt and carrier on here. It looks like you can actually buy other versions, like you can buy Mokutai and things like that, but for some people who want something that's more uniform, this may not be the right desirable thing. So, you know, do keep that in mind, and there may well be engineering reasons why this part here has to be titanium. I wouldn't be shocked if it's because there's internal threading and whatnot. You can watch the full review to see how that works. But that is something you don't want to keep in mind. Next thing, if we think about these as grip here, um, this is a little bit strange, right? It's a little bit higher than for most people. You know, as I'm writing, it's kind of in that area, but I, I almost wish it were a little tiny bit lower. I wish that this padded here extended down a little bit further. It might also help to hide this little bit of a uh, the transition here between the barrel and the, uh, the, the tip there which is a much more, uh, sort of, it's much more apparent than, for instance, on pens like this one from Tactile Turn, the side click here, where that transition has completely disappeared, even though, let's see if I can actually get it open on camera, uh, even though it is 100% there. I cannot, I need something like a rubber band or something to grab it, but take my word for it, there's one under there. 
But nonetheless, it might have hidden that transition a little bit better. And, you know, I might have liked it a little lower, but it's an aesthetic decision. Whatever, not a big deal. Um, next thing, I do notice that there is a little bit of a distinction in terms of the finishing between the uh, the tip of this guy and the barrel of it, right? It doesn't look like exactly the same color of dark tie finishing uh, down here as it does up there. That could be just the nature of whatever process he's using to get that. Um, or it could just be a, a weirdness, right? Um, but at the same time, and it could also be that that'll kind of patina more uniform uniformly over time. But at least to me, this does feel a little bit different. That's particularly true with this relatively strong line between the tip and the bottom there. So there is that. Um, next thing, the price on these guys is higher than the uh, the, the normal uh, Die Scribe Go, which is one of these guys right here. These guys come in at 100 bucks. Uh, well, the original comes in at 100 bucks. With the stone wall pattern, you are looking, I'm sorry, rock wall pattern, uh, you are looking here at uh, the uh, at about 150 bucks, right? Um, and that's, that's a chunk of change. Change. That said, there's a lot of machine time. And by the way, it's worth noting, this is machine. This is not lasered in. Each one of those things is an individual line that's put in here by a, the, the, well, by some kind of, a, maybe a ball mill? Yeah, it looks ball millish. But either way, this is milled in um, by computer rather than being something that is uh, lasered on post hoc or something like that. Um, and so that's, uh, I, I can see it taking a lot of machine time. I don't think he's ripping my face off here, but it is definitely much more expensive. And so if you're looking for value, and the art doesn't matter to you, well, go with the original version, right? And then finally, on the bad side, um, these do have a limited time availability. Um, these guys are only available through the month of March 2022. That's why I'm getting this video out here soon. Um, the thing is... It this is a purely aesthetic. Normally, I'm not a big fan of limited editions, and to be fair, he said, yeah, I'm going to make these for the rest of life. That'd be cool, too, right? But um, f the thing that really bugs me with a lot of limited editions is when it's a functional difference, right? Um, when the, the, the model won't exist in 10 more minutes, or this upgraded model with, a, you know, massively improved internals and such is, is disappearing soon, that's a thing that really frustrates me, right? In this case, this is a purely aesthetic change, and you can buy a tool that is functionally identical on an ongoing basis, and it also also doesn't appear to be a limited number. It's not like a drop you can get, you know, buy them for three minutes and then they disappear uh, or anything like that. It's just like he's giving you a time to order one. If you want one, you get it now. Is that ideal? No, but at the same time, it's not the same kind of ugly as some of the limited edition games out there. But if you're looking for one, well, this is probably the time to do it. That said, I kind of hope he continues to do these kinds of things and do different patterns like this on a rotating basis, right? Maybe this month it's a rock wall, next month it's a Freaking, I don't know what he's going to do next. I, I'm really bad at predicting him at this point. He keeps doing crazy things. So either way, um, I, I do appreciate, I'm sorry, I don't particularly appreciate that this is a limited time thing, but given that it is purely aesthetic and hopefully it frees him up to try different patterns, I'm uh, not such a big problem with it. But anyways, all of that to me is what's bad here is that it is a limited availability sort of thing. Um, it is 150 rather than 100 bucks. Um, there is a prominent line at the barrel as well as a slight difference in the uh, finish on the titanium version here. Uh, the grip is a little bit higher. This pattern is a little higher than maybe I'd like for my fingers. And uh, the bronze does have the titanium bolt and carrier here, but, you know whatever. Um, final conclusion, actually one thing I, I realize I didn't mention, um, you're going to watch the original review, but the original, uh, the, the full-size one is tuned for a Pilot G2, and so therefore it writes great like a Pilot G2 should, um, and the smaller of the two here is um, in a uh, Parker-style refill here, shipping with an easy flow 9000 cartridge. But anyways, um, final conclusion, the original version of this, the original TIE Scribe Go was a gem, right? And pretty uncontroversially, because he took something that was good, the Urban Survival Gear TIE Scribe Bolt, and he just made it better, right? Um, and so this is still functionally more or less the same pen. It just has a very different artistic touch, right? This is a very, very different pen only aesthetically. Otherwise, it's more or less the same thing, just refined a little bit. And I'm hoping that some of the refinements we see here are going to trickle their way down into the regular TIE Scribe Go line, as I kind of suspect they may have already done. So the original was a gem, um, but it was also 100 bucks, and it was maybe a little bit... The question becomes, well, what about this? Ultimately, for me, this is sort of one of those questions that's very difficult and very easy to answer because it's going to be very person-specific. This is a great pen, 100% without a doubt. I, I still like it a lot, and I'm very, very happy to use this, to carry this. There is a lot to love about the TIE Scribe Go right here. 
one cannot argue with it. Um, the question just becomes, is this the pattern you want? If you look at this and you go, oh, wow, that's really cool. I like that. I want one of that. Then in practice, you're probably going to be fine paying the extra 50 bucks, and you're probably going to want one of these guys. If you look at this pattern, though, and you're like, mm, nah, not so much, then Nah, not so much, right? You can get the original one if you like that pattern. Or maybe hold on. Maybe see if Kelvin does something else crazy next month. It's going to be more to your taste. So anyways, these remain really nice pens. These remain die scribe goes, and that's a beautiful thing for them to be. They just have a slightly different touch to it. And I really do appreciate that. And frankly, this is the kind of artistic work I'd like to see done much more often in the everyday carry space, right? People just saying, eh, what the heck? Let me try something cool. And you, you see it sometimes, but I'd like to see it, and I'd like to see it more. So you... Uh, Urban survival gear. I mean, keep up the good work, obviously. Keep doing weird stuff and keep doing compelling stuff weirdly, which is maybe even better. And uh, if you like it, you should get it. If you don't like it, you shouldn't get it. And that's kind of where it boils down. So I hope this has been interesting to you um, and that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of the day and that this review rocked you all. Uh, bye now.